we are reclaiming embarrassing to be kind of cute and adoring. That's really wonderful of all of us. It's a different form of confidence. Yes. Being like honest yeah. about how you're feeling. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Hey, I... hey mama. <laughs> <laughs> hey mama, do you feel bad about yourself? I think that's so fucking cool. <laughs> hey girl. Do you have a memory that you like can't get out of your head from 15 years ago? Because you're just like so fucking humiliated. Share that with me. Hello, hello. Every Sunday, my show in New York City is back. Tickets at AshleyGavin.com. Um, the first one's already sold out. The second one is about to sell out. Get on it. And we are raising money for the Queer Detainee Empowerment Project, which helps uh, queer people leaving uh, immigration detention centers um, get their life on track with legal services, healthcare services, uh, emotional support. Every dollar increased dollar or new donation to our patreon is being matched by cool hand movers you get 10 percent off there also if you're looking for a move in the nyc area uh they're matching it so i'm i'm really excited about this um and you're supporting the patreon you're t- two for one queer bonus if you donate to the patreon in the next three weeks um that's it all right i hope you enjoy the episode So I'll say, I'll say this. So I can't get political, which you, as, as a lesbian feminist, I want to so bad. So we'll just talk about the great things that are going to happen in August when Trump takes over this fine nation again. (laughs) Of course. Of course. I mean, every couple months, it's the new reelection of- The dear leader. Stop. Was that a North Korea reference? (laughs) It was. I love North Korea. I don't love North Korea. I just love talking about North Korea. (laughs) Yeah. I'm yes. a big fan of North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So are we allowed to, like, what you just said to me, for example, yeah. that the things that you're allowed to talk about are not allowed to talk about? And, like, I may not go into raunchy stories in the bedroom. That's totally fine. But, like, here's the thing. I have learned what I can get away with. And so I will... <laughs> and that is fingering in public. <laughs> <laughs> because people don't really know what lesbian sex is so when they walk by they can't even see it they literally can't even perceive they're like wow look an invisibility cloak (laughs) when straight people walk by us doing public sex acts it's blurred out (laughs) they're just born with an automatic sensor in their eyeballs (laughs) they're like look at those dear friends playing some sort of hand game (laughs) they must have gone to camp together and kept they were roommates for years definitely roommates (laughs) such good friends okay sorry what can you get away with let's just talk about everything else like let me ask you this this conversation like when i when you say i'm not allowed to swear i can't get political um i'm assuming you want that cut out because you don't want to talk well if you guys want to get political i'll just be sitting here like Right. <laughs> I like that you went, there's something in my teeth. There's always something fucking in my teeth. This is why I can't be single because you have perfect teeth, by the way. I always TV need someone teeth. to tell me if there's something in my teeth. You all don't even know. I was born without lateral incisors. So these are my canines. So when I was in eighth this grade. This is your trauma. This is, the, this is the diversity that we've been waiting for. Of course. A woman without lateral incisors. I look like a bunny rabbit, seventh and eighth grade. Oh. I don't know how to explain that. I'll show you a picture. I've made TikToks on it in which everyone's like, on everyone else's of this like specific sound. They're like, look at that glow up. Mine was just like, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I feel you. I feel you. My front two teeth were essentially parallel to each other. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Like on an angle a little bit, but like had a gap between them and were not facing this way they were like this way i i oh. had really bad teeth as well but now my teeth are literally perfect and <laughs> so i really can't orthodontist orthodontist yeah. give it up for the orthodontist where's the yeah let's give it up. oh you got it upside down oh i do oh have we it. have a soundboard can you hear that i didn't even need to do that <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing whenever i watch the news there's always this like 30 second delay where the anchor will be like Thanks, Todd. And then Todd will be like, oh, thank you so much. But the anchor has already moved on. 
The anchor has already moved on to the next se segment, and Todd, Todd is just left hanging. Correct. <laughs> it's like the lag goes both ways. So like that reporter out in the field did not hear that they said thank you. And so like now I just literally go like this. Oh, that's smart. Like, yes, yes. And then eventually after the first nod, like they take me, they like get out of me. Just nice. by the way, Megan just did the nod three or four times and not the nod that our listeners are familiar with, which is like you gay nod. It was like <laughs> yeah. a very, honestly, a very heterosexual, heteronormative nod. Yeah, it's um, a news nod. It's a news nod. nod. That's great. Okay, mm -hmm. well, what an incredible guest we have today. Yes, we're so lucky. Yes, Megan Mitchell, you know her from Instagram and TikTok. Huge on TikTok. Huge. Uh, Huge. Enormous. <laughs> Megan Mitchell... Fake news, fake news from the lesbian on TikTok. Fake news. This intro, man. I she's mean. not allowed. She's not allowed to come. She won't even say anything. She won't deny it. Oh my god, she Ashley. She will not deny it. Oh my god, Ashley. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, it's weirdly accurate. Thank. I have a really. I do a really good job. <laughs> um, no, you're you are uh, an NBC news anchor in Cincinnati. Big old gay news anchor, Megan <laughs> Mitchell. Up? We're so excited to have you. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. We've been following each other for a while, Ashley. And well, so I, I wanted to I wanted to have you on my podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't actually want to be my friend. No, no. <laughs> Lies. One of the best things about this podcast is the friends that I've made. I'm not even kidding. That sounds so corny. It's really hard to make friends as an adult. Yes. You have found a way to get through that. No. Through a podcast. Mandatory fun banter for an hour, about <laughs> often including childhood trauma. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing yeah at the way. end of this, we do 20 minutes of uninterrupted eye contact <laughs> to seal the bond. No, it's true. I'm like friends with Brienne and yeah. Elena and Kevin McHale. I text with Kevin McHale now. That's crazy. Love that. I was just going to say, how's Kevin McHale doing? He seems well. I haven't texted Good. him in a while, to be perfectly honest. Of course, yeah. <laughs> but he did tell me I was very talented at my backyard LA show. I love that. We're talking more about me texting with celebrities than Megan, but you're huge on TikTok. Yeah, TikTok has been a whirlwind in the last year. Did you pick it up because, like, what made you get into it? Yeah, my so my brother is like full on Gen Zer. He he was 18 at the time. So he's actually just graduating from high school, but obviously it was weird with the pandemic. So I drove home from Cincinnati to Connecticut to visit my family last June. And I was like, oh, Drew, like, what are you doing? And he was like, nothing. I can't do anything. We're in a pandemic. So we just like <laughs> drove around and he's like, do you want to learn TikTok dances? And my brother is also gay. So he's like, got all the dances. I was going to ask you. Oh, yes. That's and so... Fun. It's so fun. And so we started learning them. And then he kind of like nonchalantly was like, if you just kept doing this, like as a news anchor, you'd probably get like some followers. And so I was like, okay, like that'd be cool. And so I've had like my undercut. Yeah, I saw your video recently of the undercut. Yeah. Yes. And I've had that for like five years now. I just think it's funny that <laughs> no one knows I have it. I mean, about 5 million people on the internet know that you have it, but <laughs> now well, they now. know I have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to make like a TikTok showcasing the fact that I have an undercut and then you see me and I'm what you see on TV, a news anchor. And like previous to this, I had already gotten on lesbian TikTok. Like I knew the trends, I knew the players, whatever. And so it was just easy to like, kind of start my own videos and not have it be like super cringy. Like sometimes I see some news anchors that are like trying to be like, and I'm like, no, that's not a trend. I that's thought you not meant the other way. I thought you meant like super cringy, like, oh, Ashley was doing the well, the lesbian TikTok, like, hey, lip, mama. Wipe. Yeah, yeah. Hey, mama. Hey, hey mama. mama. That's yeah, all yeah, yeah. She's actually good at it. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. <laughs> actually, I'm not kidding. So my girlfriend, Jess, I whenever I do this, she's like, Stop it. She I, like hates it. I'm yeah, like, it's <laughs> disgusting. No one ah, no one no one should do it. Every time I every time I dab, I have to pay my partner twenty dollars. <laughs> That's an arrangement that we have. <laughs> Wait, I hate the fact that Jess is now gonna watch that and make the bad deal with me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You better You save might have up. to pawn that Emmy. You might have to pawn that Emmy off. <laughs> I should. She kept bringing my Emmy around to different parts of the house. And at one point I was like, Jess, 
I know we're living together and we're trying to keep things civil as, as we should. You can do that with literally any other thing in this house, but can you just leave the MEB? I don't want it to break. That's <laughs> such a diplomatic way of being like, don't fucking touch my MEB. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the opposite. I'm going to I'm going to make people touch my Emmy on the way into my apartment. I'm going to be like, Kiss Kelsey, the ring, can you hold this Emmy. Emmy while I fuck you? <laughs> She's like, can, can I at least be laying down? This shit is heavy. I'm like, no, <laughs> do the Emmy pose while holding the Emmy while I fuck you. <laughs> oh my God. What did you wait? Because I think I think Kevin was nominated for an Emmy and I felt very good about having an Emmy nominated person on the pod. Shout out, Kevin. We love you. <laughs> For who you are and not just that you've been nominated as <laughs> for an Emmy. For your talent and your uh, charm. But if we were and charisma, to just single someone down to one sentence, absolutely. it would probably be that he was nominated for an Emmy. I mean, yeah. I And I have nothing. What do I have? But <laughs> what did you win your Emmy for? You're our first Emmy winner. Yeah. So, okay. This is from two years ago now. And I did a story. It's actually, it was a really tough story to do about a few different teens who had committed suicide in Cincinnati oh, at no. one specific school district. And so I went in there with a couple other reporters and we just like talked to, I, my focus was on the parents. And so I was talking to them about what it was like, you know, she lost her son and the story itself was really impactful, but the interview more so than any interview that I had ever done was like the most intimate, not in a yeah. weird way that I've connected with someone on in an interview because she was showing me like different places in the house where they would, you know, have fun together and all of this stuff. It was, it was tough, but it ended up being a story that I think made an impact. Yeah. That's incredible. And I'm sure the family appreciated the chance to get to remember their child in a public way. Yeah. Thank you for being here and thank you for making that story. And I'm so glad that you won. I'm so excited for this episode. I'm Ashley Gavin. I'm a cis gay white woman she her pronouns and then and megan i want you to know because you're our first guest where this is going to happen okay by popular demand <laughs> by popular demand my cancel coach aka the fat in the chat <laughs> i was me, asked baby. i was asked and given explicit permission <laughs> to call them that <laughs> That is the only identifier that they're sure of. <laughs> it's Kate Sisk. Hello, 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 everybody. It is I, the fat in the chat, Ashley's cancel coach. <laughs> um, my name is Kate. I'm 5'2", 200 pounds. <laughs> oh I'm white. I use any pronouns. Gender questioning? E sure. Okay. Lesbian, bisexual, dyke, etc. So glad that you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any new listeners? All, consent was given. I must make that clear. I did. I pitched. I pitched fat in the chat, and I'm glad that the listeners uh, support. No, they were like this, and it's not a topic that we've talked a lot about on the podcast. And yeah. I do think queer identity and weight are often linked, yeah. and it should be talked about. Yeah. Um. So I hope we get there at some point. Yes. And let's bring Megan back in because we've just had a slew of cancelable offenses. <laughs> I have the whistle touching my lips. A very highly requested guest. Yes. We're so excited to have her. I'm assuming her. She, her. You bet. Megan, do you mind introducing yourself? Absolutely. So I'm Megan Mitchell. I identify as a woman. She, her pronouns. Um, I'm white. And I am a news anchor and TikToker. Awesome. And what's your dream? Like, do you always want to stay local or are you trying to be a Don Lemon, Anderson Cooper type of person? Yes. Aaron Burnett. I, I would fuck the shit out of Aaron Burnett. I just oh want God. everyone to know that. Hey, Rachel Maddow. Is Rachel more your type? Actually, yes, than Aaron for sure. But Rachel also technically is a pundit not a journalist oh, you know but i hear that i hear that yeah. tell us, and I think tell that's us the really definition of that because yes. listeners yeah i want you to get your news from an actual news source you little pieces of shit not yes. twitter okay <laughs> go off what is the difference I mean, it's been tough in the news world with people just making like quick like slideable instagrams that they think they've gotten the day's news from i'm like no with so much misinformation I um, know we talk about it as if misinformation only exists on the right, but it exists on the left and it's not helpful mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. 
yeah, the amount of vetting that like a news station and a news organization has to go through is is pretty crazy. Not that I'm trying to promote my own business, but like, hey, if you want to watch the news, you should. I would say goals. Like I've always had this dream of anchoring the Today Show, right? Goals. I love you. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm obsessed with you. I, <laughs> I'm your I think, newest I was fan. Like, Why are you so obsessed with me? I think you'd be great on the on the Today Show. I would love that. Right, that's like my dream job. I remember, like I said, I would intern at like Thirty Rock, which is where the Today Show airs. And yeah. so I would like walk in there as an intern. I would like be on the same floor as the Today Show, although I was working for MSNBC as an intern. And I like literally would just be like. I want to be here. And then Alec Baldwin would make you get him a coffee. <laughs> Correct. I'd be in the elevator with the coffee. Well, when you work on the Today Show, you have to get up at like 2 a.m., right? I do get up at 2 a.m. You do? You've been up since 2 yeah. a.m.? Oh, my god! You know what? Today is like my Sunday. So I oh, like nice. woke up at like 8. Oh, my God. Dude, I don't have an alarm clock. And if I'm uh, if I'm out of bed by like 10, 15, that is like a good day. Yeah. Actually, I got my hair done today and I went to my hairdresser and I was like, I'm so sorry. I am so groggy. I woke up so late today, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, eight o'clock. Wow, that's late for you. I'm like, she knows. She knows. <laughs> Love wow. my hairdresser. <laughs> wow. You're, a, you're like a beacon of light and positivity. It's true. There's you have such a joyful energy. That's so nice because a lot of the times I'm depressed, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the way you said that was very was, cool. Was very like, you you could have been saying like, yeah, I actually have a Jeep, so. <laughs> oh, so, you know, like mm, most of the time I'm dealing with anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder, so. Are you really? Oh yeah, I have like, Horrible OCD. This is great. This is great stuff. <laughs> we love the SSRIs. Lexapro is like my best relationship I've ever had. I love you, Jess. I love you, Jess. I literally have never seen someone talk about mental health like this. It's like, you're like, yeah, actually I went to prom all four years of high school and uh, yeah. I have a lot of friends. <laughs> person we all know that person i think it was because of my teeth situation i'd never got that so i'm now yep. using it as a coping mechanism for my mental health yep 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 yep, yep. okay we <laughs> have to get into gay sex but i have a feeling this episode is just going to be this is fun it's just fun okay wait ab ab about on the topic of mental health can i give a therapy update oh yes absolutely okay okay so kate's therapist ghosted them <laughs> A few oh. weeks ago. No, two, How like, does that oh, happen? two months ago. Two months ago. We're not sure. So I like put through so many calls to like the office and stuff. And I guess she's been home. I, I don't know. She finally called me back and she forgot my name. And no. we have the same name. <laughs> Dead giveaway. <laughs> okay. How is that possible? She's a mess. Don't work with this I know. woman. I won't. Don't work with this woman. I won't. Yeah, get a new therapist. I need Which to. I know is easier said than done. I That's mean, true. we all know finding a therapist is literally the hardest part about having a therapist. So <laughs> since we're yours. talking about it, I will, I'll tell my therapy thing Okay, as just a, a brief thing. So I've had the same therapist since I was four or five and a few Whoa. years. Yes. Yeah. I'm one of the, yes. That's yeah. crazy. So he's obviously like met my mother, um, knew my father before he passed away. And he, a few years ago, got, a lot of the listeners don't know this, but he got cancer and uh, told me that I had a year of therapy left. And at that point, I was very depressed and we were talking about SSRIs, but I, um, I did not end up taking them. And I looked into all these different ways to improve my mental health, which led me on a journey to now the happiest point in my life. So that's like, you know, it's been, I mean, it sucks that he's dying, but I feel great. Oh my God. But... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the cancer, Fred, but I'm feeling good. <laughs> oh, oh, no. But today was at, and then it went into remission, so we had a little more time together. But then it came back, and uh, today was my penultimate therapy session with him and my last one in person with him. He made a special exception because of the pandemic to let people come and see him. That's nice. And uh, yeah, so I'm feeling a little raw. Yeah. And he did ask me if I wow. was dating again. And uh, I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> you know I am. Because I'm going through a breakup, Megan. Doctor, Megan, what a weird if there's episode. one thing I want to tell you before you die, it's that I'm fucking. I'm fucking, <laughs> Fred. 
<laughs> Fred, I am slaying puss. I am wrist deep in it. I- <laughs> He will die happy now. Um, <laughs> Fred's just furiously masturbating. Stop! Stop. This ninety-year-old shriveled dick. Oh my god, okay. Ashley. Okay, <laughs> Fred. I hope you don't listen to this one. Anyway, gay sex. I have been so. This is my second. I've been a serial monogamist, and then I did a hoe phase. Dated a wonderful woman for about a year and a half. We broke up for timing reasons, different points in our lives. I am entering my second hoe phase. And can I tell you, I am hoeing with such efficiency. <laughs> I don't know when the farmers replaced the hoe with the tractor. Oh my but God. I'm not hoeing. I am, I'm straight up farming. Oh, my God. You're farming. Oh, my God. You're reaping the look, harvest. Look at Megan. The seeds not you have coming. sown. Not commenting on this section. She's like, at NBC, we can make Megan no is comment on this. Smiling and nodding, and <laughs> it's the news nod. <laughs> We're getting the straight up news nod. <laughs> She's drinking her LaCroix. <laughs> this is a great one for YouTube or Patreon. Um, but I, uh, so I'm going to give you the option, okay? Of okay. which story I can tell. I like when you do the choose your own adventure. Choose style. your own adventure. I love it. I had sex with a girl on the road, road trip. <laughs> I stop. <laughs> I got her to whisper. I'm gonna bump the volume up on that. I am bumping the volume up on that. Stop. She's like, I cannot say a fucking. Why did I agree to do this podcast? Let me, let me. Um, I have never seen someone smile through regret so shiningly. <laughs> She's such a pro, and I'm going to break her down. I'm going to get comments. I know this is going to sound wild, but we we actually have on our local radio stations some wild guys who say stuff like this a lot, and our main anchors go on, and they, they say what they can. They don't say what they can't. So listen, this is just my version. This is like my queer version of that. Okay, well, I like hopefully that. this I is like less that. degrading to women, although I did compare <laughs> them true. to vegetables. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> did. <laughs> Mass-produced vegetables at that. <laughs> we all love a good squeeze of a tomato, and <laughs> not so many fans of carrots in this bunch, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I had sex on the road. I had just started hooking up with an actor uh, in New York. And I stage. also, <laughs> yes, the stage. <laughs> an actor of the stage. I needed clarification. No, that's, that's actually that's a really true. good question. That's a good point. And then also today I asked a girl out and I had a funny little text exchange with her that I would love Let's to. Let's hear it. Yes. Okay. Let's, Let's do that. Okay. It. All right, cool. So I'm actually going to pull it up on my computer. Because... I'm surprised you didn't punch me in the face when I just snapped. <laughs> oh, Oh, wait. I oh, forgot you Why would so... that be a thing? Ashley is anti snapping, mostly from a comedy point oh. of view. When people, people snap, snap at, at her jokes, show, I lose she my mind. snaps mentally. <laughs> 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 so, this girl who's been, I guess, following me for a while, because now I'm. I'm scrolling up to like the tippy top of our. Wow, she first messaged me uh, almost a year ago. And wanted me to roast her on do these roasts on TikTok. But she's like a fan of the pod and we've been going back and forth like just about different things about the podcast, like nothing major. And then today I'm like reading her texts and I see this text from her that says like, hey, like I'm in Brooklyn. Do you want to hang out sometime? And I like went to look at her profile because I was like, well, maybe I would. I don't know. Her little profile picture was cute. So I was like, okay. And I saw she wasn't following me. And I did not go through all our texts. So I just thought, okay, maybe a newer listener, like not a high risk. There are people who are like, love the pod. And I don't think that I could ever date someone who's like, yeah. Yeah. Are there people who just like love the fucking news (laughs) and you can't date them? Yes. (laughs) There are. Um, but <laughs> yeah, did you did your girlfriend that, know you from TV before? You know what? We had actually matched like four years before we started dating. And like, I think she knew I was on the news, but she doesn't watch the news. <laughs> she's the exact opposite of like all of us. Well, no, she's she can like have fun and like get rowdy and have a joke type of time. She's serious. But she's literally someone who like doesn't know 
anything about social media. She doesn't know oh. anything about YouTube. Doesn't know anything about. She watches TikTok like it's a job now. She like loves TikTok, but like <laughs> she doesn't get like she's not like with the trend. She's not. You know yeah. what I mean? Which I, I kind of good. like. Yeah, I yeah. think that's great. So I don't want to like go on dates with people who like love the pod and feel like they already yeah. know me. So totally. I'm, you know, I don't see any history. Like I don't see. She's not following me. I didn't scroll up, so I didn't know. And I look at her profile, and I was like, oh, she's, like, beautiful. And she's also a horse girl. Oh, okay. Well, it's not like, still? First. Yeah. So she's an actor, and I think one of her day jobs is that she photographs weddings, but also horses. Oh, she like competes. I think there's a lot of money in the family, if I'm going to be totally honest. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's an indicator. Like there's there's horse, there's like regular horse money and then there's big horse money. <laughs> She's the big horse money. Mm -hmm. Like pictures all over the world of her photographing horses oh, and wow. on horses. Okay. You know what I mean? So you're right. This is next level. This is, this is like Hor this horse is girl. Sh like for real. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. So I love that you're like, I was like, oh no, oh no, we shouldn't make fun of horse girls. And then you were like, she's like so rich. And I'm like, so this is punching up. <laughs> yeah. This is fair. There's your <laughs> levels, the levels. It's based on income. But then I go to respond being like, yeah, like I'll go on a date with you. And the message isn't there anymore. She unsent the message. Oh, she disappeared. No. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then Dude, I, that's weird. Then I yeah. felt like I was insane because I wasn't totally sure whether or not the message was there to begin with. So I'm having an existential <laughs> crisis. I thought you couldn't disappear it once it had you had read no, it. You, you can unsend a message anytime. You can really make people go crazy. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Wow. So did you get the little notification that said no? And that was the weirdest part. I didn't get the notification. Because usually you get a notification. Oh. Because I get those notifications all the time. People regret what they send to me. <laughs> I didn't know. Wait. I, oh, no. Oh, no. You've been unsending messages? I unsent one specific <laughs> message. To oh. who? I unsent a benign <laughs> message, but it was to someone I had hooked up with before. I just like, I, I don't like to message people when I've been drinking and yeah. I messaged something totally like innocuous. It was not like flirty or anything. But then I felt How weird. How about dumb tomatoes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at <me>. <laughs> You know I can't comment on this. Come on, you guys. But so I just sent like an innocuous I message. I want you to say out loud, no comment. <laughs> so that the <laughs> listeners at home know what's happening here. I, I need a transcript of this written out and it just says like long pause <laughs> silence from Megan <laughs> but I sent an innocuous message and then felt weird because I had been drinking and that's just like anxiety yeah sure. so I disappeared it thinking like no harm no foul but now because we have a history I'm afraid that she thinks that I sent something sexual and then unsent it it's possible no you know I wouldn't think that she would think that I would think that she probably thought oh she sent me like a cute thing that she then regretted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Regret I don't is know obviously implied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but not no. necessarily like sexual. Sexual. Regret. It doesn't have to have sexual <laughs> undertones for it to be unsent. Okay. Sexual okay. regret is my favorite punk band. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I say, hey, I feel like I'm on crazy pills. I thought you may have sent me a message asking to hang out. And she was like, yeah, I did. And I was really embarrassed. Aww. And then she goes on to say that she panic unfollowed me when this happened. Oh and that's God. why she wasn't unfollowing me. <laughs> or that's why she wasn't following me. She shot her shot. It worked. Yeah. And then she like unshot the shot. She unshot the shot. <laughs> and then we just Wait, had, like, I love that you got that validation knowing that you weren't crazy though. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would have. We know that she won't gaslight you. Right. Possibly. <laughs> That's true. Oh, my God. You're so right. And then, and this is, okay. Now, you guys tell me what you think of this. Although, oh, no. like, I'm getting, like, a slight mask energy from you, Megan. Not, like, in your presentation, but, like, in your personality. Sure. I don't know what you are when you're not, like, a news anchor and in pub public. I love that. I consider myself, like, energy-wise, like, a power bottom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I have, like, a 
feminine energy that maybe takes over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or mask. (laughs) But it's funny because like, that's what I got. Mask, hair flip, hair flip. But that's what I got from like your Instagram profile and like the way you dress and like the undercut. But like talking to you, I'm like, I don't know what you are. And I, I do have to say that a feminine blazer is my type but I also don't want this to turn into sexual harassment so like I have a lot of crushes on news anchors okay so this Erin Burnett hope you're getting ready for those 20 minutes of eye contact (laughs) which is lesbian sex also yeah also um Kate Baldwin on CNN holy shit dude Kate Baldwin if you are for whatever reason listening right now please (laughs) please ruin my life Okay, oh. so I will let her know. <gasps> you know Kate Baldwin. Shut the. Fuck we all up. know each other. Just kidding. Oh, oh. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> that was amazing. Don't do that. That was amazing. I believed you. I was like, "Are you no, fucking kidding me?" That was amazing. <laughs> okay, Ashley's sweating. So she, <laughs> we're talking. I'm like, I'm gonna like level up here the conversation. Well, it's like a little flirty, but I was like, I'm gonna let this girl know that. I like that she's sweating also because she's like embarrassed from like the the unsend <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. unfollow and it's like a fun little like dance. You know, yeah, yeah, it's totally. Fun. And then okay, so wait, sometimes- I, I'm so sorry. Can we just like for a second? I like the fact that we are reclaiming embarrassing to be kind of cute and adoring. Yes. Oh yes. Like, it's earnest. That's really wonderful of all of us. Open. Great job. It's like yeah. vulnerability. Like it's very attractive. Totally. Yes. yes. Um, it's a different form of confidence. Yes. Being like honest yeah. about how you're feeling. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Kate. And keep that in mind as That's I move exactly into it. this next segment where hey, hey I. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama, do you feel bad about yourself? I think that's so fucking cool. <laughs> hey, girl. Do you have a memory that you like can't get out of your head from 15 years ago because you're just like so fucking humiliated? Share that with me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> That was unreal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Now I'm going to be embarrassed. Okay. This episode is going to be a two hour recording. I know it. <laughs> but that, those are the best. So much Patreon content. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to let, I'm going to take this from flirty to like kind of sexy. <laughs> I have a thing that not all girls like that I like to do in text, in text only. Okay. In text only. When I'm trying to flirt. Okay. Megan, you get to name this girl. She's a horse girl. I think she has a billionaire father. Her last name is a first name, last name. Okay. What is her full name? Sarah Thomas. Sarah Thomas. Oh, great. Fun. So I'm talking to Sarah, but my little move is something like, let me just read it. Let me just read it from. Oh my gosh. I was like, what's the dream? And she said it was acting and blah, blah, blah. But she has all these jobs. So I was like, <sighs> I said, well, I have all kinds of thoughts about that. Miss Thomas. <laughs> Kate hated that. Megan hated it. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes girls love that. Oh, my God. You said in text only. So you would never do this face to face. I would never do this face to face. Text only. <laughs> okay. Sometimes girls really like it. And when they don't like it, wait, wait. They hate okay. It. Listen. Okay. In person, I would hate it. But if I was to think about It's just perhaps, a little flirty. Wait, what were you saying? If you it so in person you would not in like person? it. In person? Nah. In text? Uh, well. It's just to put Sometimes it's sexy and sometimes it fails. And then oh, no. she said, I hated that never again, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know she's very honest, both about herself and about what she's looking for. Yep. <laughs> she's been nothing but honest so far. And I uh, <laughs> I also spelled her last name wrong. So Oh no. Yeah. There was a double letter. Because it's probably right there. Yeah. 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 But my yeah. phone kept correcting it. Oh. <laughs> so that's my gay sex from this week. I really hope <laughs> she'll still have sex with me. She's really hot. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. So listener, I hope you don't have less faith in my abilities based on this <laughs> story, but a lot of you have written in saying that you like the vulnerability and the authenticity of the <laughs> podcast. So I just feel that I needed to put that epic fail out there for you. And yeah, um, and you know what? Vulnerability, empathy seems like something that you have and that she has. So yes, could work. She out. is really. I like what you said because, like, I was. I'm trying to detect more. I mean, I'm only hooking up with people, but I'm also trying to detect more red flags going into things. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. this is a lot of with the horse. I don't know. It's a lot. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. But I like what you said about especially her if you are also not into horses, then that is where it is a red flag. Wouldn't like, this if be so obsessed- weird if if I just this was the day after one year of this podcast that I go, yeah, actually I um I have a horse and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm actually gonna travel with the horse <laughs> and take photos of the horse. <laughs> um, that is my gay sex from this week. Love it. Megan, did you have gay sex this week? Um, here's what I'll say. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> My girlfriend, Jess, she came home yesterday after three days camping with straight people in a cabin. Okay, so a horror and movie. <laughs> <laughs> basically. Um, and we just cuddled on the couch all day. So I would say yes. I, I think that does that is, that is that technically is form another of form of lesbian sex. sex. Yeah, the all day cuddle. <laughs> the all day cuddle. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Especially after a very straight, you know, hyper masculine trip. Um, yeah. What was hyper masculine about the camping tr- trip? There were straight men there. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. all straight men. <laughs> and one one straight girl. Okay. Yeah. Um, How does she know them? Are they like friends from long ago? Yeah, like her old job. Um, this was like her best friend at her old job. Okay. So when you cuddle, yeah. when you cuddle, are you like a big... How long can you cuddle for before you're like, this has to end? <laughs> it like so de- I know this is going to sound crazy. It's it depends on where I am in my period cycle. <laughs> like, <laughs> I swear when I and this is an OK on- topic to talk about because that's just science. <laughs> Absolutely. This is half the world gets periods. Um, here's the thing. I let's just say I'm PMSing. Sure. I don't want to be touched in those yeah. moments. Okay. I am bloated. I don't feel well. I feel angry. You're unclean. Um, You're unclean, I, <laughs> as they would say in the Hasidic Jewish sect that one girl that I hooked up with. No, it's true. Oh, that's that why she they told you. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what happens to me. PMS. You're unclean. When you have your period. Oh, when you have your period. This is like pre-period. Oh, pre-period. pre-period. Okay, okay. This is pre-period. So I'm kind of like I'm angry. You know, like. PMS rare type vibes. Yeah, yeah. When I get my period, I'm actually like in need of love. Yeah. That's I code. have been missing it the last week. And so <laughs> yesterday I just sat on that couch and all day I was like, uh, 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 like baby koala style. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and are you, um, are you the big spoon or the little spoon? It just depends on the day <laughs> and the time of month. <laughs> Like, I think the thing is about Jess and I is like, there's not like this clear cut, you know, masculine, feminine energy, which is different than actually a lot of the relationships that I have been in. And so like, sometimes like I want to wear a suit and she like wears a dress. And so that's so cool. Yeah. It's like real. And I've never felt that before either. So I'm like, yeah, I'm a big macho man. (laughs) I thought you were going to say I'm a big boy. (laughs) I feel like a like the dominant. You yeah, know. I'm just picturing you at the like at the desk, being like, "I'm Megan Mitchell. I'm a big boy. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big boy Megan Mitchell. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Mama. Thanks for listening to the big boy macho news. <laughs> Have yeah. a mask night, everybody. Have a mask night. <laughs> Amazing. That's so funny. Um, how did you meet your girlfriend? How long have you been? You said you're together a year. A year. And we actually met so years before that. Oh. Um, here's, it's a very typical lesbian love story. Um, four years. So five years ago, matched on Tinder at the time. And we were talking. She, like, was headed to Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. So we started talking about that, whatever, whatever. I was just getting to know the city and hanging out with a lot of my friends who worked in news. And so... I didn't, I wasn't even in like this thought process of dating at that point. Cause I was still 
just like new to the city and whatnot. So that kind of faded out. And then uh, a year after that, I started dating this one girl named Lauren. And then it was like a really quick relationship, like two months. And we were like, we're better as friends, whatever. And then Lauren and I stayed friends. And then a year ago, Lauren reached out to me and was like, hey, I went on a date with a girl named Jess Frew, who I believe knows you. She wants me to put in a good word for her. She goes on the date to get the good word? That is crazy. This she is goes so on a lesbian. Date to get the good word. This is so, so lesbian. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If, if we're not breaking any stereotypes, here. your friend is like tossing her hair, playing with her earring, kind of like, you know, like batting the eyelashes. And then she's like, hey, 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 I just listen. <laughs> I know this big boy named Megan Mitchell, and I know that you know. <laughs> I know that you know. Please her. put in a good word with the big macho man. <laughs> <Megan Mitchell. laughs> like they had met up for like Pride last year, and it was just like, oh, they liked each other, but didn't work out. And then Jess was like, here's here's my number. Can you give it to Megan? And Lauren wow. was like, listen, I know it's kind of weird that I'm giving you someone's number, but I. I think she's a really great person. So. But did Lauren have any ego about this? Was it like mutual that they weren't into each other? Yeah, I, I think it was mutual. Like, I yeah. think everyone in the situation was like, we're good. Let's rearrange. <laughs> Let's switch. <laughs> I don't think that I would have, <laughs> that I have the constitution to accept something like that. Wait, also, no, it was Pride two years ago then that they had met. So this is a year later. Okay, okay. Because it was oh. actual Pride. It was actually, right. last year was pandemic Pride. Oh, I thought this was like, all at once basically it's timed out it's okay timed out. okay okay that makes like, more sense yeah. yeah i still was introduced to my girlfriend through my ex yeah so. <laughs> and when you very were, lesbian were you interested immediately or were you like oh i've already seen this person on tinder you know it was really weird i think i i actually stopped dating for a while in cincinnati just because i was like <sighs> I, I just didn't feel why I hear the Cincinnati queer scene is just popping. It's booming. It's hopping. <laughs> it's it's not. But actually, I <laughs> have found a great community here, which has been really nice. Nice. But with that said, it was like I just wanted to kind of do my time in Cincinnati and leave. And then I ended up really loving the city. So I stayed here through two contracts. And I feel like at this I was at this point like a year ago, especially with the pandemic, where I was like, I kind of want to like actually try this with someone. So like I was talking to a few people online here and there. And then Jess came and then I met up with her at like a taco place. And it was just so easy. Like that's mm. the first thing that I just kept thinking. I was like, I don't feel super nervous. Like I don't, it mm -hmm. just feels like so easy to talk to her. And then it kind of just kept being really, really easy while being exciting. And then a year later, here we are. And <laughs> what's your, like, what's your, you said that neither one of you is like a typical, there's no mask, there was no femme. Like yes. just, what is your typical type? Right. So I, my typical type is just like anything more masculine than me is like generally mm. what I'm attracted to. So from there it kind of just varies like I've dated people who are very very masculine and then I've dated people who like just flirt with like masculinity and at that point I didn't flirt with masculinity um if that makes any sense so no it does I mean you're undercut yeah. I really <laughs> thought you were gonna have much more mask energy just based on yeah. the way you button your um tops to the top button <laughs> and honestly and, and you're that's undercut. The thing is I've realized yes no I love how it looks and so I think for so long, I was thinking, oh, but I don't give off that energy. Like, I can't dress like that. And then I was just like, yes, I can. Yeah. So we're going to beat that. We, oh, okay. my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Canceled. <laughs> Cancel her. No. Cancel her now. No, I don't believe in those Blow rules. the whistle. I don't like those rules. That is what the system <laughs> is. Redemption. <laughs> the men decided. The men decided. Okay, this whistle coming from the man. <laughs> I don't stand by it. <laughs> I don't believe in it. <laughs> is it okay if we just bleep it, or or is even the idea that you've said something bleepable? No, you could you could just. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she, she said something bleepable. <laughs> this Honestly, whole podcast is bleepable. Yeah, as long as you don't hear my voice saying it. Okay, okay. Because I think you guys have the best podcast. I doubt oh. my news director will be listening this far in. <laughs> Honestly, Megan, that's fucking. That's rude. A, that's no. Yeah. That's, that's wise. really rude. That's wise. 
<laughs> why would you say something like that? <laughs> the 20 minutes of eye contact are off the table. They're off now. Yeah. <laughs> I was having such a good time. God, fuck, we can't release this. I ruined it. I thought we were all about honesty and authenticity here. That's true. That's true. Ashley. That's what we've established. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> 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 wait i had one more for you no that i think that's yeah. great because like i'm flirting with the idea of buying a t-shirt dress and i feel like that's my my button all the way up to the top yeah wow yeah i don't know if it'll ever happen i could see it with, i like, love a pair that of sandals. for you oh thank you well, fuck what yours what i don't care what your opinion is <laughs> i've got <laughs> megan megan's back Kate, megan's back at the club um but okay. hey <laughs> i feel like we've gotten so into like fulfilling societal roles like heteronormative roles even in yeah. homo relationships <laughs> for sure and so i and and while that also is like super validating especially to like you figuring out your gender identity and stuff as it stands right now my gender identity or i should say my gender expression really is just like what i'm feeling by the day like and I, I like that because that yeah. I think is how I've like lived my like life in my younger years, not like mm -hmm. when I got into middle school and stuff, but like I specifically remember having like 20 shark shirts, like just like shark <laughs> shirts that I would just wear on a cycle in is fifth grade. Were you case? best friends with the boy who wore the wolf shirts? <laughs> that's the thing and they were both like just out there and we're like yeah did you see this picture like but there yeah. is there is something that happens when you get to like 10 yeah. 11 years old that the boys can keep being these playful fun young beings and the girls are just like weirdly sexualized but mm -hmm. like n told not to be sexual right. yeah. and like having to walk that line yeah 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 absolutely but it's fun to like bring that into your every day as like an adult. That's super cool. Yeah. And you know what is interesting is that my mom and my dad, the first thing that they said to me when they initially came to me and said they weren't okay with me being gay was they said a couple different things, but along those things, like don't tell anyone. And also please don't start dressing like a man that is or ex whatever. Almost exactly. You had a post that I wonder if our mom is actually the same person because you had <laughs> a post about your relationship with your mother, how close you are with your mother now. Yes, I am. I, I'm very close with my mother now and she's very really? supportive. But when I came out, she said almost that exact same thing to me. She was like, are you going to buzz your head? Or are you going to like, you know, dress like yeah. a dude? Yeah. And then it just like took like a few years for them to like be okay with it and then it was like they're now recognizing that it's not going to affect my career which they genuinely thought for the last like seven years they kept being like don't come out it's gonna ruin your career lol well to to mm. be fair it there was a time where it would have not it's that true. long ago not yeah, to be it, fair but to in no in their defense to be fair Gay people shouldn't be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we're too loud and obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. No, what I mean is like in, uh, they were trying to protect you with, yes. with a yes. sentiment that isn't necessarily okay. That's not okay, but yeah. you can understand where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. But like the, the last year for them, <laughs> the last year for them has me now gaining millions of followers from being gay. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big gay Are money. Are your parents no. Netflix? <laughs> like, oh. You know what's crazy? As a journalist, gay? I can't accept any ad sponsorships. Sure. Yeah. I make AdSense on TikTok. Yeah. Which yeah. is not that much. No, it's not. <laughs> but listener. Um, patreon.com slash whgs the ads don't actually make that much money isn't that crazy wow it's crazy. <laughs> go subscribe to their patreon and to megan's which doesn't exist no as a journalist i can't take money from you but glad to have you here and listening <laughs> go follow megan for when they i don't know i don't know but so that they can or so that she can book the biggest thing in the entire world that's why we want you to yes. follow megan it really will help yes and also i'm not trying to sell you anything so i will give you my authentic voice almost all the time i'm trying Cold to sell you facts. everything and <laughs> nothing you hear from me is real <laughs> Um, wonderful. You are a wonderful human being. I absolutely want to have you back on the pod. You, yes. Oh my gosh. 
I love it. Let's yes. do it. <laughs> Please TikTok gesture everything. I don't know how to describe. Did you like gesture like that pre TikTok or is that something that's a learned behavior? Every if you I remember I got in the news desk in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the first thing that like all of the people kept saying was like I and now that I am on TikTok, it's just transformed to all TikTok things. Like it's just so annoying. But everyone on air prior to TikTok kept being like, stop gesturing everything. La, 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 la. Interesting, interesting. Oh, weird. Yeah, because like, I you guess can't, you have you to kind of sit still. Oh, Do you hold well, little news, papers? News anchors just like sit there and talk. I'm like, listen to this. <laughs> I think that's engaging. Yeah, why are you not allowed to gesture? No, no, I, my boss hasn't said it. He loves, he gave well, me good. a, that's a promotion. Your boss like, loves I gestures? Love so your boss is gay I guess he listens doesn't... to the podcast. <laughs> How fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> he actually now identifies as specifically a lesbian so. <laughs> we have gay men on sometimes <laughs> um wonderful do you mind if you if we go to kate let's go to kate kate tell us your oh story my God, can you throw it to kate <gasps> can you say um, did yes. you have gay kate, sex are you allowed to kate sisk the cancel coach no the fat in the chat <laughs> Are you allowed to say fat in the chat? chat. As long as she gives consent. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Please adjust your earpiece as you throw it to Kate. (laughs) We're right now going to go to Kate. (laughs) I was about to say fat in the hat, like like the book. (laughs) Fat in the hat. I don't even like fat in the chat. (laughs) I am wearing a hat today. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> the fat in the hat. <laughs> One genders, two genders, red genders, blue genders. <laughs> oh my God. I will not choose pronouns on a train. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let's give let's give oh, Megan another chance. Okay, okay. Take will two. You, so that's how the news no, works, can, right? You Take can, two. Um, fat in the chat and then something about a coach? cancel coach either <laughs> one okay and, and kate what's your last name sisk, sisk. Okay. and what i what i typically well, that's say ironic what i what i typically say <laughs> is you're not <laughs> <laughs> my name really is kate funny. Transk. <laughs> kate, Transk. <laughs> kate non-binary um, yeah what i typically say is kate did you have gay sex this week but yeah. you can use whichever whatever is organic for your throw i'm not going to direct you okay. you throw it to kate however you want this is like my shiny okay how moment. about this how about this so we're actually here i'm going to throw it to kate sisk the coach with the most the chat cat <laughs> we gave her the yips we gave her the yips we broke her we okay. broke the, we broke the anchor woman take three that's how the news take that's three how take you three all right, we are going to toss it over to Kate Sisk, the cancel coach, the fat in the chat. And before we go to her, I actually want to go to Ashley Gavin, who has more on what exactly we'll be talking about. Kate, did you have gay sex this week? <laughs> Thank you, Megan. That was amazing. That this was is one so of the best good. moments of my that life. That was so good. That was amazing. <laughs> also, uh, the way you did your eye contact and like, you, wow, I really would have thought there was a whole crew behind you. Right? I feel like or I'm in the way. middle of an actual news story. <laughs> um, Kate. You are, Kate. Well, I used to do, I used to pretend to be a news anchor when I was a kid all the time. Aw. I'm just trying to get into that place. I can't get there. I'm having the, I'm <laughs> having the, abs- Kate. Yes. Did you have gay sex this week? <laughs> that was good anchor voice. It was okay. It was okay, right? It was medium. It could have been better. It was good. Okay. The thing is, is like, actually, what's weird about anchor voice, not to go off on a tangent, is that as society is changing, we're trying, at least I am, and a few of my friends, like, nobody wants to hear anchor voice when they hear the news. Like, right, mm-hmm. right. when you listen to, like, the daily or anything, you just want to hear it. Right. You just sure. want it to be normal. And yeah. so... That was a very old school type thing. And you'll see a lot of like the newer anchors and and or old school anchors do it. But like once you start to get your groove, we're trying to like just be approachable and conversational. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Kate Sisk. Yes. D- this is more this is more the Knicks like I'm Marv Griffin. <laughs> Kate Sisk, did you have gay <laughs> sex this week? <laughs> Kate Sisk coming in with the gay sex <laughs> from the half from the it's the buzzer. <laughs> she scores! 
Cyrus, Kate Sisk with the Kate with the gay sex. Oh man, it was a tough match out there, but uh, <laughs> I made her come uh, <laughs> once or twice, maybe. I don't know. It was a little, I was a little, you know, ruffled at the end. Um, oh man, uh, I just want to thank God <laughs> <laughs> and my teammates. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without them. <laughs> <laughs> Our team is a family, and this was a family effort. <laughs> okay, I, I I did not have gay sex this week. <laughs> <laughs> but you, we've had we've had Megan here for an hour and fifteen minutes. So what's what's what? Okay, okay. Our straight friend came to see us during Pride and convinced us to go. <laughs> And it reminded me of like an all-time classic Pride story. So I'm going to oh, tell that. Oh, wonderful. So um, Chelsea and I had been long distance for a very long time. So Is we that your had, partner? Yes, yes, that's my yes, partner. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. We had never been to Pride together. I had been to Pride like literally alone in New York City. <laughs> Oh, and okay, that and, hurts my heart. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, and she had been to Pride with like a bunch of friends Why didn't you ask in Brazil. Me to go to Pride? I, I don't know. This was a, this was a while ago. Maybe I didn't know you that well okay. back then. Um, and we had just never been to a Pride together. And she was living in Boston. We were like, we're gonna go to Boston Pride together. Like mm. it, we're actually gonna be together during Pride. Like it's gonna be great. So her apartment was in Brookline, and it was a basement apartment. Okay and sounds scary it was not it was a really nice oh, apartment I, but it was I definitely underground Didn't I drop you off that there one time yeah it's yeah i think so little place yeah too. um <laughs> this is so alienating to to <laughs> megan oh yeah that apartment <laughs> yeah that, that one building. it's so it's wait like, what neighborhood what neighborhood it was brookline. like walkable to coolidge corner in brookline okay well i went to school in boston oh. so here's there you go yeah, so, so she had just gotten into BU Law. She was still working. Mm -hmm. We were going to go to Pride. We're in her basement apartment. And she is always on my case about me being too jumpy and too easily startled. And like, <laughs> like she could sneeze way? and I'd be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, she's just messing around. Yeah, she, yeah it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a little like quirk, of, quirk of mine that I'm like yeah. too jumpy. Easily startled. Stop Easily jumping. startled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, whoa, Chelsea, she does down. spank me every time I jump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so in the middle of the night, it was really, really hot because it was like June or whatever. And I was sleeping. Are you ready for this? Without a shirt on. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden I wake up and I hear something like hit the wall next to me. And I'm like, oh, my God, what was that? That's scary. And then the next moment I feel leathery wings on my chest just flapping on my chest and I was like Chelsea there's a bat in the apartment <laughs> and she was like classic Kate you're getting all startled over nothing it's probably oh a god. moth oh my god and then all of a sudden like past the like lit up outline of her door you could just see a bat fly right by no <laughs> yeah. so we turned on all the lights and there was like a pretty big bat wow <laughs> in the and studio apartment you. i thought was, the whole yeah. thing with bats is that there's a, there's like lots of like bat pr people out there like being like bats will not fly into you know what i'm talking about the bat <laughs> pr people everyone's always like yeah they're blind but they I won't don't fly know into you. <laughs> <laughs> what you know what i'm talking about there's always someone to be like actually the the radar yes, is yes. very the sonar is very strong well so when they're inside it doesn't work as well <laughs> bat, bat, oh really yeah because it's bouncing off all the walls and shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's oh. why it flew into the wall. Because it was, like, confused. This and then bat. it flew into me. Oh, my and God. flapping on my bare skin, which was very scary. Wait, like, a bat would really be confused if you put it in a room. I think probably depends on how big the room is. It was also probably panicking. Because it had been in there <laughs> for probably a long time. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I... Can I tell you what I honestly... Where I thought you were going with that yes, story? Yes, yes. I know. I thought... Yeah, you go first. I thought that there was going to be like someone with a kink of like leather and whatever in your room with like a wing. Like <laughs> I know, I really thought that Chelsea was we startling you pride. sexually. We right? I, yeah, the bat is a weird twist in the classic gay <laughs> sex like, pride story. Oh, it actually was a bat. <laughs> Kate did use the word classic <laughs> to describe this gay, gay sex story. A, cl a classic. And you know how bats are classic. Classic. 
not classic for everyone is just like a She's classic, a classic so- bat <laughs> the bat was on me on my naked body <laughs> i am the mask one so i had to catch the bat <laughs> But the funny thing was, is is for safety, I pulled on Chelsea's like long dress gloves and put on like a garden lady hat, like <laughs> for safety. For safety, with a, like a shawl and a scarf to like cover all my skin. Sure. So I was doing something very mask, which was catching in a drag. Bat. It, basically in drag. I was yeah. a, I was essentially a drag queen trying to catch a small flying mammal. Um, Batty ma. <laughs> Batty boop. Batty boop. There we go. There we go. That was Love excellent. It. Very <laughs> thank good. you. Thank you. Great so job. I caught the bat and I let it go. And then the next morning we woke up and we were like, was that bad? Like, it was that dangerous to us? And so we like looked it up and it's like, well, you could get rabies and sure. you would die in three days or whatever. And Chelsea was like, how stupid would it be to like get into law school and have this like promising life ahead of me? She was like, I've got a full ride. How stupid would it be to die with a full ride? <laughs> like it was like a oh, financial, yes. like the, the, if she wasn't like, Oh, I'd be dead. She'd be like, Oh, well I'd be losing my scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really poor financial decision on her part. Really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we called her dad who is a doctor. And we're like, do we need to go get rabies shots? And he was like, no. (laughs) Wow. And then we called my dad, who worked at Toyota. And he was like, go to the hospital. (laughs) (laughs) And so we went to the hospital. I was about to say, and who did you listen to? We listened (laughs) to my dad. I'm so, I'm laughing so hard. (laughs) Megan, thank you so much for staying with us some extra time. Oh, sir. I'll I'll wrap this up quickly. So we go, we go to the hospital. Was there any discussion? And were you just like, we're going to listen to, what's your dad's name? John. John. There was some discussion, but really what nailed it down was she was like, I can't lose my scholarship from dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I can't lose my scholarship. (laughs) So we go to the hospital. They have no idea what to put in for the insurance codes because they're like, you got bit by a dog. And we were like, no, a bat. Right. And you weren't bit. And listeners, if so, if you've woken up in a Listener, room, if you've had a bat on your this shoulder, is for real right in classic, if, classic, classic. <laughs> classic. <laughs> if you're having a classic pride moment and there's a leather daddy bat in your room. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you wake, it's this so is really funny. a PSA that I learned. If you wake up in a room with a bat, assume you have been bit because their teeth are so small and sharp that it won't leave marks. And there have been some tragic stories of people waking up in a room with a bat. Also, and if dying. your partner is hooking up with a bat, you'll have no fucking idea. <laughs> that bitch is cheating. I will say that the that <gasps> bat has like lesbian vampire overtones, right? So it is a pl- yeah. classic pride story. Oh, that's the end? No, no, yeah. no. Oh, I was like, the oh. PSA is the end. No, no, no. The, just that's a real PSA. Here's the rest of the story. We go to the hospital. They eventually take us back to the room together and um, you just have to get a bunch of shots. So they give Chelsea her shots. It's like arm, arm, leg, leg. And then the nurse looks at me and she goes, so the shots are proportionate to weight. So you are going to get quite a bit more than her. (laughs) (laughs) She didn't need to say that. So She (laughs) really didn't need to say that. How many more? Like two more. So I got I got nah, arm, arm, didn't need to leg, leg, and then I had to get ass cheek, ass cheek. <laughs> so I have my pants. Look at Megan. She's like <laughs> classic <laughs> lesbian story, pride story. So I ha- literally have my pants under my like ass cheeks, and she's doing like the second ass shot, and she goes, "I hope you two are close with each other." <laughs> no point did they ask our relationship at all that is actually a classic pride that is moment. true yeah and i looked way less gay then so like we totally could have been like St- perfect strangers perfect strangers just that <laughs> adjacent strangers <laughs> so that's how it ended no that's a great story yeah that was that wonderful was Batty so we missed pride was the whole thing oh sure yeah 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 to recover from the rabies shots from the immunoglobulin oh. immunoglobulin yeah i think that's what it's called cool yeah what does that mean i okay. don't know um <laughs> well thank you megan what an epically long episode that we yes. had you here for thank you for taking <laughs> thank me you so much almost half hour of extra bonus time 
Um, hey. Where do you want people to find you? What are you working on? I am working on news stories every single day on Channel 5, WLWT, ooh, ooh. and my TikTok. Is there a way for people to watch your story, your news coverage online? On WLWT.com. I should be, yes, promoting nice. that. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. And I yeah. feel like we should have Megan take us out. Yes. <gasps> For the oh show, my you can close. Gosh. The name of the show is okay. "We're Having Gay Sex," just in case. But I don't think that you can say that. But just in <laughs> can case, can I say WHGS? Yes, yes, yes. that sounds. And it's so funny because it, it sounds, sounds like, like an NPR station. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it does. Okay. Um. From me, from Ashley, from Kate, we are signing off here on WHGS. Thank you all so much for listening. We always appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Um, my cat is like seriously headbutting me during this, so I apologize if uh, there he goes. Ah, uh, gay thought this week. Um, what am I? Am I? We we have so many words to describe gay people. You know, for men, there's twink and bear and otter, and for lesbians, there's you know butch and femme and footch and chapstick and I just I don't know what I am I get offended either way I get offended if people well no one calls me femme but sometimes people call me butch or footch or soft butch I've, I've been called a squishy squishy butch and I, I hate all of it and uh I don't understand why straight people I understand why these terms are helpful, like, on a dating app or, like, trying to define someone's type to somebody, but they're also kind of annoying because straight people don't have... You you never hear a guy... You never, you'd never hear a guy be like, yeah, I'm just, like, I'm more into, like, a butchy woman. <laughs> and honestly, if you meet that straight man, like, befriend him. He is good. He is a good straight man. Straight listeners, write in. Do you consider yourself butch? Are you into femmes? <laughs> like when you see Harry Styles and you find him attractive, are you like, oh my God, I really love Harry Styles. He's very femme. Yeah. Okay. That's my gay thought. Thanks. Uh, the episode today, the editing services were provided by Cool Hand Movers who we're working with to raise money on the Patreon. They're matching all Patreon donations and increases and donating it to the Queer Empowerment, uh, Queer Detainee Empowerment Project, uh, which I've mentioned a couple times. QDEP.org if you want more information about volunteering or about the, uh, the um, project itself. And Cool Hand Movers is a super cool local New York City moving company. I trust them with the life of my couch and uh you can get 10 percent off your move right now let's go into patreon shout outs i'm pulling them up here we go on instagram we have pepper nicole coach that's nicole with an h on tiktok we have oop there it is on instagram we have adriana underscore underscore marcano on instagram we have Navia, N-A-E-V-Y-N-A. -E on Instagram, we have Queer Recon. On Instagram, we have Fic. On Instagram, we have Vic underscore Finley. On Instagram, we have underscore Tantrum underscore. On Instagram, we have Becky Graham. On Instagram, we have Tiffany Who with three U's at the end of that. On Twitter, we have Katie Shear, S-H-I-E-R. On Instagram, we have Haley Slavic. On Instagram, we have Matt JD82. On Instagram, we have Asian Rona. On Twitter, we have Physics Fox13. On Instagram, we have Bree.m.t.t. That's Bree with two E's. On TikTok, we have Hoosman96, H U U S M A N N. On Instagram, we have Tut. <laughs> on Instagram, we have Tough Knits. On Instagram, we have Ellie Shiavitz, S H. I-O-V-I-T-Z. I know I messed that one up. On TikTok, we have Hella Cute Fella. On Instagram, we have Chrissy underscore Kale. Maybe Kaylee. Those are spelled with Ks. On Instagram, we have Lissa Rose 77 On Instagram, we have Megan Brittany. Uh, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-E-N-I-E. -E. <laughs> on Instagram, we have It's Shina. S-H- 
sorry, S-C-H-Y-N-N-A-A. On Instagram, we have alex.lives.well. On Instagram, we have radish with three eyes on. And then finally on Instagram, we have I'm uh, E-B. Oh, my goodness. I'm, uh, okay, I-M-A-E-B-Y-A. Oh, my God, what is this? Oh, nope. There, the, I think this has something to do with maybe Bluth from Arrested Development, but I can't figure it out, so I'm just going to spell it out. On Instagram, we have I-M-A-E-B-Y-A-B-L-U-T-H. Thank you guys for your donations. It makes everything better. We have thousands of dollars of costs. Um, we've, we're making a little bit of money, but not much. It really, really helps. We need a new editing computer, all different kinds of stuff. Thank you so much. And if you're listening, if you're listening, yeah, yeah, I love you, buddy. I love you, pal.